So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, what I have is y equals negative 2 x squared plus 5. And what I'm going to do is show you how to graph this in our vertex form. So the main important thing when doing our vertex form is we need to be able to identify what are our, our h, our k, what is our a, our h, and our k. All right. Now, in the first thing, so some of you guys, if you're having trouble with this and you might want to like um, have trouble with this, some, one of the easiest things to do to get started with this is just to identify what your a, h, and k are. So in this case, my a is equal to negative 2, my h, and my k. My h, you guys can see, do I have any parentheses of x minus or x plus anything? No, no right? So therefore, my h is 0. It's non-existent. I do not have an h. So if my h is 0, let's look back. What does h do to our graph? What does h do? Oh, it's a horizontal translation. So if h is 0, that means the graph is not going to shift left or right at all. It's just going to stay put. All right, And k is going to be plus 5. So that means that's my vertical translation. That means my graph is now being shifted up 5. And remember, when I'm talking about a graph, I'm talking about this parent graph. All right, This graph is being shifted up 5 units. However, there are some important points. Now let's look at A. We see A, ladies and gentlemen, is negative. So does that tell me, does my graph open up or does it open down? Down. It opens down. I don't even need to know what my graph looks like, and I can automatically tell you guys that this graph is going to have arrows going down. Right? I know my vertex is 0, 5. So I'm going to go up to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and make a nice big dot. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, I know my vertex. My axis of symmetry is 0. Now I need to find the other points. But ladies and gentlemen, the problem <coughs> with finding the points is now you can also see that my a, the absolute value of a, is greater than 1. Right? The absolute value of a is greater than 1. So now I have a horizontal compression, all right? or you could also say like a vertical stretch. So my graph is not going to be the same as my parent graph. So what I'd like to do is choose points to the left or to the right. Again, it doesn't matter which values you choose, but you're going to want to place some values inside of your graph to see what their values are. So let's, um, let's have Tanner. Which points would you like me to choose for my table? Just pick two points, to the right or to the left. No, let's just pick. No, you don't, don't tell me what the answers are yet. We'll figure those out. But what would be an x value you'd like me to try? 1. one. What's another one? Uh, yeah, 2. two right? Don't go crazy. You don't need to be like, oh, 3, 8. Just be something easy, right next to the axis symmetry, right next to that vertex. Now we need to figure out what those points are. So we plug them into the equation y equals negative 2 times 1 squared plus 5. 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So I go over 1, up 3. 1, 2, 3. Now let's plug in 2. y equals negative 2 times 2 squared plus 5. Uh, 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. So over 2, I'm at now. Um, Negative 3. 1, 2, 3. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 5. 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3. So now. You guys can see I have half a graph. And again, I can go back to using my axis of symmetry to reflect over the points to finish the rest of my parabola. And there you go. I'm done. So. See, Nick, it's times like this where I lose my patience for trying to 
see what I can do to help you out. When you say that I don't you understand what's going on in this class, and then I give you opportunities to write down notes, to pay attention, to ask questions, and you're playing on your phone. I have a stupid answer. Even stupid.